So in the last video we have discussed a few topics like what is mutual fund, what are the different types of mutual fund, who are the market participants in the mutual fund and long cycle or launch of private mutual fund. Okay. Now in this video let us quickly discuss some few differences like what is open ended and what is closed ended. Hope you are able to see my screen right. So let us see the difference between open ended and closed ended fund. Okay. Open ended funds means whenever you are entering into mutual fund, the entry and exit will be very easy. It means you can subscribe, you can purchase any number of units at any time if you want. And you can come out of the market or you can sell your investments, you can sell your shares at any time you want. But in closed ended funds, when the fund is closed ended, the entry is very easy, but the exit is very difficult. Means you can purchase any number of units you want, but you cannot sell as and when you want. To sell that units, you need to sell, you need to transfer that units in the stock market only. Okay, you need to sell that units in the stock market and then come out. Okay. This is what open and closed and so another difference you can see is in open ended there will be arbitration in capital fund. So many number of new holders, unit holders will be coming and a new um, so many existing unit holders will be existing uh, like a going on. Okay. So there will be alteration in the capital fund, but in closed ended fund there is no alteration in the capital fund. This whenever you want to change or come out of the market just hands changes like your units will be transferred to open market like in the stock market okay next in open rent funds as you can sell units whenever you fund that liquidity is very easy whereas in closed ended funds the liquidity is very difficult in fact it is a hard because you need to find the right investor to sell in the open market which is a very difficult task to come so fund itself acts as a liquidity sometimes. So in open ended funds, fund itself acts as liquidity. So you can sell to the fund and come out of the market sometimes. Okay. And in closed ended fund, you can sell the units in the open, open market. Open funds, this is the simple difference between open ended and closed ended funds. Sometimes in interview, the interview they will, have, they will also ask what is the difference between open ended and closed ended funds. Okay. Also, then ask what is the difference between entry load and exit load. So, load me at the time of purchase of units, they will impose some fee. Mutual funds will impose some fee. At the time of sale of units, these mutual funds will impose some fee. Like maybe. If we call it entry load, typically it will be around 2 to 2 point 2 5 percent rate. Okay, now actually this entry load is banned because as it is a person absent in the mutual fund part. Okay, why when you purchase at the time of purchase, when this fee is imposed by mutual fund, then you won't subscribe. Then uh, you will look for another opportunity. So another investment opportunities. That is why as it is affecting the mutual fund market adversely. So that is why what this SEBI uh, uh, you know, has means they have abolished this mutual uh, entry load. Then what is this exit load? Exit load means it, it is the fee charged at the time of exiting from the or moving from the scheme before maturity plan. So before maturity plan, if you are selling the units and coming out of the market, then the mutual funds will be imposing a fee called exit load. So 
this fee is charged to discourage the investors not to sell the investor not to not to sell the investments this fee is uh, this fee is generally charged by the mutual funds okay hope you understood the difference between anti load and exit load also now let us see what is the difference between this active plan and the passive mutual mutual funds okay Generally, in active mutual funds, what these fund managers will do is they actively participate in the market. Means they actively trade in the market. Okay. So these managers how to take prior to decisions? They take prior to decisions. Of course, these fund managers will take prior to decisions whether to buy or sell a particular stock depending upon the market conditions. So depending upon the market conditions, they try to uh, buy or sell the particular stock. Okay. The aim of the fund manager in this active mutual fund is to generate maximum returns. So then they keep the benchmark as index. Means Nifty 50, they keep that target. So how much return the Nifty 50, Nifty 50 generates? These fund managers will also try to generate that kind of returns in the same proportion to uh, same proportion to this index. Of course, in active mutual funds, they generate higher than the benchmark. So they generate higher returns than the index. Like for example, say, in the 50 generates uh, some amount of return. But in active mutual funds, they generate more than the return when compared to which is so this fund manager is supported by analytics because uh, to give all these decisions definitely the fund manager will be having uh, analysts okay and um, uh, research team also who will be having research performance of the work they track the performance of the company okay they give so many inputs to these fund managers to take right decisions at right time so that's why the expense ratio is more in this uh, active mutual fund okay what about this passive mutual fund? See, in passive mutual funds, the only difference is the fund manager will not actively trade in the market. They just invest and keep selling. Okay? They will not take product positions. They will not be having so many uh, analysts or research team to give so many inputs. So they keep the target of in index as a benchmark and they generate returns in the same proportion how much the benchmark uh, the index the index generates. Like how much is the return the initial 50 50 generates, that much return will be generated by the passive mutual funds. Okay. Hope okay, friends, this is the main difference between active mutual funds and passive mutual funds. Now let us see what is the difference between systematic investment plan and systematic funds for that. You know SIP means systematic investment plan. Okay. SIP is a, actually a savings type, is somewhat savings type. Every uh, month some amount will be debited from our bank account. Okay, every month we will be investing some amount of money into mutual funds. Okay, based on that, the units will be allotted by the mutual funds. Okay, so at the end, we will be having a NAV value. Based on that NAV value, the units will be allotted by the mutual fund. In every month, like 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, we will be investing. Based on the NAV value, we will be getting units. Okay, this is what systematic investment plan. Systematic transfer plan means some amount will be transferred from one scheme to another scheme, like from debt to equity. Okay. So if you are in the already investing into debt, so then if you give guidance to the mutual fund department, then they will transfer some amount from debt to equity and some amount from equity to debt. Whenever you want to take high risk, they will be transferred from debt to equity and whenever you want to take low risk, sometimes they will be transferred from equity to debt. So this is all about the systematic investment plan and systematic transfer plan. Okay. Now let us discuss about direct plan and regular plan. So in direct plan, investors directly buy units from the asset management company. 
Whereas in regular plan, invest starts by units from intermediate is like brokers, prime brokers like zero da, moti da, oswal, etc. So invest starts like you and me in direct plan, they direct me five minutes from the fund managers or asset management companies. Whereas in regular plan, through demand accounts we buy. Okay. So when we direct when we buy, buy directly from the asset management company, the ex, uh, the expense ratio will be very less because the expenses will be very less. Whereas in regular plan, the expenses will be more because we have intermediates to intermediaries like us on fine books like zero and Motilal Moswa who will be charging fees. So that is why the NAV will be uh, more. Okay, the now the, the, the now will be more in direct plan and the now will be less in a regular plan. So that is the main reason. Okay. So when the expense ratio is more uh, less, the now will be more, and the expense ratio is more, the now will be less. So sometimes they will ask what is the difference between direct plan and regular plan that you need to answer. Regular plan means we purchase units through brokers. Direct plan means we directly purchase units from the asset management, asset management companies. Okay. So because um, as we are purchasing units directly from the asset management, asset management companies, we don't need to incur any extra costs like uh, intermediate um, paying through intermediate processing fees or entry door or exit door. Okay. So because of that, there will be higher now um, in direct plan. Because of that, there will be and then now will be less in regular plan. Hope you understood. Okay. This is all about direct plan and regular plan. Okay, friends. This is all about a few important topics in um, mutual funds. Okay. Now. Yes, friends, this is all about. I think we are clear with most of the important topics. Okay.